from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Hanukkah, time change. The question is, uh, why is it that we commemorate Hanukkah? What exactly was the problem that precipitated the need for a victory over the, over the Greek series? If we look in the book of uh, the Gilat Chashmonaim, not necessarily the most uh, authoritative book, but an interesting book of Megillah of, uh, Megillah of Hanukkah, Megillah's Chashmonaim, written perhaps in the seventh century, or it's also found similarly in the Otsar Hamidrashim, page 189. It says that the Greek said, mm-hmm. Now the Greek said, Let us uh, nullify the covenant which the Jews made with their God. What's the covenant? Shabbos, let's nullify Shabbos. Rosh Chodesh, let's nullify the Jewish concept of setting the months each month, the Jewish months. And Bris Mila, and the covenant, the circumcision, the covenant we have with God. So these are the three things. Now, the question is, why these three? If you look at them, it's sort of one doesn't belong. Sure, if you want to nullify the covenant, you nullify Shabbos, which is a sign of the covenant, and the bris milah for a little boy, which is also a sign of the covenant. But what's Rosh Chodesh? What does Rosh Chodesh have to do with it? Why would the Greeks set their sights on Rosh Chodesh? You could give various answers. Rabbi Salvejik mentioned that the, I think it was Queen Victoria said that the Jews are okay. But why do they need to have separate cemeteries? Or similarly, the Greeks may have said, the, Gre- the Jews are fine, but why do they need a separate calendar? Let them use our calendar. Perhaps that is pr- part of the uniqueness of the Jewish people. But uh, the Shem Shmuel, the Sachachav Rebbe, suggests that what's operative here is, and what's the common denominator of all of them, is that we have the ability to change nature. And that's what the Greeks, that's what the Greeks objected to. It was like our special secret that we had. And that was what they had a problem with. These, these Fasemes says that, that the, we say that we should light the candles until Tichle Regel Menashuk, until the foot goes out from the market. In other words, until the end of rush hour. But he says, you know what that means? It means you should get rid of the hair gale. You should get rid of regularity. Because as Jews, we want to make things special. We want to take every day and make it special. So he says, look at this. Every holiday we have is a holy day. You can't work or some work restrictions. But, but Hanukkah is a holiday, but there are no work restrictions. You know why? Because if we want to really fix the whole world, tikkun olam, fix the whole world, repair the world, sanctify, elevate the whole world, we need to change even a weekday to be holy. So what we did was we took a normal day and we say it's Hanukkah. It looks like a regular day. That's right. And that's Rosh Chodesh also. So Rabbi Salvitch explains, Rosh Chodesh is the time we take a day, a person goes to work. It's like a secret holiday. Nobody knows. But back in shul, you're saying the Hallel, saying the Musaf, it's a sanctified day, but it's a, it's a weekday. This ability of the Jews to change to change things, to take the human body and say, well, I know God made it, and we, we don't tamper with God's body, we don't tattoo, we don't scar ourselves, but the bris milah, we're going to affect, we're going to change the human body. We're going to change time. We're going to make a plain day, and we're going to turn it into Hanukkah. We're going to take a plain, a pl- a pl- a plain day, and we're going to turn it into Rosh Chodesh. And we determine the time. Notice, a Jew decides the, in the ancient times, and one day, once again, we'll do it again. We decide when Rosh Chodesh is. Even today, when we make Rosh Chodesh, it's because Hillel the Shani, the, the uh, ancient sage, he affixed that that's going to be Rosh Chodesh. It's not God who determines. Shabbos is determined by God. Rosh Chodesh is determined by human beings. Jews, we determine when it is. And, and based on that, that's when Rosh Hashanah is. That's when Yom Kippur is. That's when Pesach is. And we make Yom Kippur. We make Shabbos. You ever hear the expression, a woman makes Yontif. She makes Shabbos. Because that's a holy task to take, take a home, a family, a, a Shabbos table, and turn it into Shabbos. That we, we make Shabbos. 
And this, the Greeks were amazed. The Greeks were jealous. The Greeks couldn't believe it. How did Jews change time? How do we metamorphosize the profane, the, the normative, the, the regular? How do we turn it into something special? And that was the secret of the Jews. And the, and the Greeks recognized They said, we've got to do something. They're making Shabbos. They're making a calendar. They're, they're changing the human body. They're changing nature itself. For this, we have to do something. And it's, it's a hard job. It takes all of our kachas, as the Svasemis explains, it takes a whole family. A bias, the, that's why we light on the, at, the, at the doorpost. We, the whole family lights. You have to light in a house. It has to be your house when you light because it takes a whole family to change time, to make this simple day into a Hanukkah day. And the, it takes a family. We know that how did the revolution take place in Egypt? When, we, uh, when, when the Jews went out of Egypt, it took the house of Levi. It took a family to change the world. We as Jews believe that the family of Abraham, the family of Jacob, we can change the world. And this was something the Greeks were very upset about. The Greeks got upset. How can you do that? The world today, the nations of the world are upset. Israel took a land of nothing, of dilapidation. Look at the Temple Mount before Jews arrived. It was a dusty place with an unpolished dome. And we turned it into a, a, a Gan Eden, a place of, of, of business, a place of hustle and bustle, one of the envies of the world. And the world says, no, we don't like it. You put it back. You can't do that. You can't ch- transform things that, that much. Let it be the way it was all, all those years. And we as Jews, we say no. There is a special power in this time. There's a special power that the, the Maccabees put into this time. Yemei Shmona, they kavushir, they, they established Yemei Bina, Yemei Shmona. These people of great wisdom, they were able to change and metamorphosize, change the land of Israel, revolutionize, make a revolution against the Greek Syrians. And we today can also stand up to the whole world and we can transform the land of Israel the way we want it to be, we can transform a Jerusalem and make it truly a holy center not for one religion, for all the religions of the world. A place where monks and priests and Arabs and Muslims all worship their gods in one place. The world is amazed. We can do that. It need not have the chaos that goes on in Syria and Lebanon and so many other places. We can bring order, we can bring holiness, we can bring beauty, we can bring development to this world. We can change time, we can change place, we can change space. That is the special Jewish genius. And that's what the Greek Greeks were fighting so hard to accomplish. Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh, and Mila. Shabbos, the new month, and the Bris Mila. These were things, symbols of the Jewish ability to change time, to make a time change. And that was something so amazing. It was, became the envy of the world, continues to be the envy of the world. The Jews can transform. Jews can take something as every human being has that potential to transform things. We show the world you can change. You can make your day. Make your day. Make it a happy day. Take a simple day and make it a special day. Wake up in the morning and say, this day can be a great day. I can change it. I can morph it. I can take this space, whatever, a small home that you have, you can make it into a Shabbos. You can make it into a Yantif. You can change and morph something into something new, something beautiful, and something special. So we wish everyone a happy Hanukkah. We hope that you can transform this, these simple days into days of joy and days, hopefully, that will be an inspiration to us and to all the people of Israel. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here at the Anshi Sfar Beth Lameth Congregation for our discussion of the holidays. Join us each week for our discussion of the various parshas, how-to videos, and uh, some longer, hour-long lectures as well. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asb.org.